Hennessy Sports now bring you a cruiserweight contest. This bout scheduled for eight rounds of boxing. Time to the ringside is Martin Fallon of Wolverhampton. Upon the sound of the bell, the referee in charge of this bout is our scoring referee, Christopher Dean of Birmingham. Boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the solid blue shorts this evening. He's on the scales at 12 stone, 8 pounds, 3 ounces. 21 career victories, including nine going inside the scheduled distance. He stands in the ring this evening as a former IBO Youth Super Middleweight World title challenger and a former African Boxing Union Super Middleweight champion. Now boxes out of Amsterdam, the Netherlands, by way of his native Uganda, introducing Farouk Dekko. And across the ring, boxing out of the red corner, wearing white, gold and black this evening. He scaled at 12 stone, 12 pounds, 3 ounces. 15 career victories, including five finishing inside the distance. He stands in the ring this evening as a former English and British light heavyweight champion from Birmingham, England. Introducing Shekhan Pritchard. Referee Christopher Dean with his final instructions. Hey fellas, you know the route. No low blows, no kidney punches, no rabbit punches. Listen to my words of command, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. The first round. So eight rounds here between Shaq and Pitters, who is in the white, gold and black, and Farouk Daku, who is in the blue shorts. This described correctly by our MC as being at cruiserweight because these two both weighed in over the light heavyweight limit. Daku was 12-8, Pitters 12-12, but Pitters will be campaigning at light heavyweight at 175 pounds when he gets back onto the title trail, which he will be looking to do as soon as he possibly can. He's not enjoying being described as a former British champion. Good solid right hand there from Pitters. Daku had his back to me, but you could see that register. Six foot six, Pitters, very tall for a light heavy, but manages to make the weight okay. Goes downstairs with a right hand to the body. He won that British title against Chad Sugden, but then lost it in his first defence against Craig Richards. Good fight, tough fight, 50-50 fight going in. Right hand to the body there. And Daku takes a little bit of a stumble away to his right. He's 36 years old now, boxing out of Amsterdam. He's been a distance with some decent operators. Went eight with Patrick Nielsen a while ago. Ten with Nicky Holskin in 2016. Holskin, you remember, came in at short notice to box Callum Smith in the World Boxing Super Series. And took the Liverpudlian down the stretch himself. So, Pitters will have to open Daku up here, who I suspect may not be that expansive, boxing out of the southpaw stance. Pitters, though, just landing a nice crisp one-two there. Just hooking off the jab there, Pitters. Very little coming back from Daku at the moment right hand again but the gloves are up here from Farouk Daku who just moves in a little bit tighter and tries to work up close if he can really Daku needs to be all the way out or all the way in he can't stand on the borderline of range right on the end of, end of that jab of Pitters he's blocking these with the gloves but close is safe really for Daku Just flicking that lead hand there, Pitters. Seeing if he can draw something from Daku, who did try and close the gap there. Pitters aimed a massive right uppercut, which didn't miss by all that far. Final few seconds of round one. You can see Daku give ground every time that Pitters lands on in the schedule. 4-8. 
Now goes the ball at the end of the first. That was that solid straight right hand. Just fell in a little bit there, Daku. He was trying to throw his own backhand, which for him is the left hand. Weight came forward. He got stuck in middle distance and got a right hand for his trouble. Boxes out of the east side gym, Shakan Pitters. That's Paul Cunahan Soggy, as he's known, his trainer, just on his knees there as he gets up and. Seconds out, round two. Exits through the ropes. So a good first round there for Pitters. Just a kind of feeling out process, really. This is, of course, a fight that he's expected to win and win comfortably. It's an outing here to get some rounds under his belt. He's had one back since that defeat against Craig Richards, against Jermaine Springer. That was a good choice of opponent for him for a first fight back. Fifth round stoppage. That finished in. And they want to get him back into contention for a title soon. That British title is vacant. Richards vacated it. Of course, took on Dimitri Bivol for the WBA world title. Acquitted himself well in a points defeat. Josea Burton and Dan Aziz have been put together by the board and that's gone to first bid this week. Haven't heard any news on it. Right hand to the body there from Pitters. Good jab, nice strong jab there. Daku's not been stopped all that often, just four times in his 18 defeats. Might just be able to get used to the punching power here of Pitters. Keeping that guard as tight as he can as Pitters looks to try and find a home for the right hand. He tucks up well, Daku. Hasn't got all that much upper body to protect. You see when he drops those elbows, keeps him in nice and tight. There's not really any body to go to there for Pitters. Looking for the one-two there, Daku. Important that he does throw something back every now and again. Left to the body there from Pitters. That was a well-executed shot. Not sure if it got through absolutely clean, but that's the kind of thing he's going to need to look to do. Get those gloves up with the jab. Get those gloves of Daku up and try and find a gap to the body. Get that leverage on the left hand into the final minute. There's that straight right. Sometimes it's getting through clean, sometimes half clean. Jab to the body. He's doing the right thing here, Shakan Pitters. He's not going crazy, throwing bundles of punches. But what he is throwing is accurate. He's going to have to break his man down here. This is not going to be a single punch job, you wouldn't say. Left hand there, just almost finding a way in round the back of the guard and a right uppercut to the body. Good right hand to finish the round there from Pitters. Putting his punches together quite nicely. There's that left hand to the body. That was pretty much bang on the belt line, but he, he covers up well, Daku, because when you saw him throw that Pitters, that left hand to the body, it's a good shot for him to go for, I think, but he's got to try and get that elbow of Daku. He's got to try and prise it away from his ribcage to really profit from that punch. So just tap up top, maybe, tap to the head with the jab, faint with the jab, maybe. See if he can get that elbow away from that position, pinned down to his side. 
And if he can land that left to the body, that is going to be a difficult one to take for anyone. Into round three, Shakan Pitters in the white, gold and black. Farouk Daku in the blue from Uganda originally, now boxing out of Amsterdam. Looking for that right hand straight down the middle again there, just ramming it into the chest. Looking for the pit of the stomach every now and again, but Daku just managed to squeeze those elbows together and for the most part, keep it out. Leads off with the left hook there, Pitters. There's that solid right down the middle. Daku is taking these okay. Last time he boxed was in September last year. Eight round points defeat in Poland. Good jab again there from Pitters. Trying to change the angle there. Just tapping to the head then stepped away to his left. Midway through round three. Just turning the screw a bit in this round, Pitters. The punch output being picked up slightly. Not much coming back from Daku at any stage of the fight so far, but particularly not in this round. He managed to get Daku to open up with a left hand there, and that's what he wants, really. If he's going to go into pure survival mode, this is going to be tricky for Pitters to find the openings here and, and get the stoppage, possibly. Good jab again there from Pitters. Just stepping with that front foot, trying to feint with that front foot. This is a good round, though, for Pitters. He's won them all comfortably so far, but you just get the feeling watching this that he's, he's tenderising Daku a little bit here. Look for the left of the body there again. Uppercut wasn't far away. He just lent in a little bit there, Daku. Weight was very heavily forward, and if Pitters could bring him onto that right hand, right to the body was maybe a little bit low. Final few seconds of round three. As I said, he's just raised the temperature in this third round. And that's what he'll need to do. Looking for the left hand again there. That right was borderline, I would say, but he's got that belt line quite high, Farouk Daku. So into the fourth, Pitters immediately looking to get onto that jab. Front feet haven't really clashed too much. We've got an orthodox against a, a southpaw here. Pitts will be looking to try and keep his front foot on the outside of Daku's front foot. Good combination there from Pitters. But again, it's solid defensive work from Daku. He keeps that guard high, pins those elbows in, and it's effective. It's difficult for Pitters to really get anything through. But these punches will be having an effect, even though he's hitting gloves and forearms for the main part. Those hands, those arms will get heavy in the second half of the fight. Looking for that right hook. Puts his right hand to the body. Left to the body was a decent shot there too. Daku very much on the receiving end here in round four so far. This is a hard way 
to make a living, it really is. Good right hand there from Pitters as the gloves were down of Daku. That was good, accurate work. Nice jab again. It's the final minute of round four, so heading towards the halfway stage of this one. It is utterly dominant. It's just a question of whether we can find the openings to force a stoppage. Daku's barely thrown a thing in this round so far. Steals a left to the body there, Daku. Short range. 1-2 there from Pitters, who's been accurate, he's wasted very, very little. And there was that right hand and one of the rare occasions where Daku's looked to try and open out and get something done himself. Pitters would love it if Daku looked to be more expansive in the second half of this fight. That'll give him the openings, but you just can't really see it. So into the second half of the fight, the schedule for eight, Shakan Pitters in the white, gold and black. Farouk Daku boxing out of Amsterdam in the blue. Pitters has dominated proceedings so far every second of the four rounds that we've seen. Good cupping right hand there from Pitters. And more of the same at the start of this fifth. Daku just covering up. Be Keeping those gloves high. Just rotate through, Just rotate. Keeping those elbows tucked in. He's not an easy target to find clean. And he can take a shot too. Right hand there from Pitters. Just keeping those hands moving. Trying to vary up the weight of punch. The corner just asking him to keep up the pressure with the jab and just shove that jab into the into the face of Daku. Good right hand there from Pitters and I think that had an effect then he really digs in his toes and he's landing some good crisp shots here. Four or five of those just bounced off that solid head of Daku and he takes the well left to the body there from Daku from Pitters rather was a really good shot that one did find a little bit of space and Daku is, is hurt here I think he's in trouble a minute 20 remaining in the round Pitters with a right hand and you just saw Daku just give a little bit there I wouldn't say he looks unsteady exactly but that was some onslaught there from Shakan Pitters good accurate spiteful stuff and Daku here really is just looking to try and cover up and Pitters, if he can keep working in the final minute around five here, I think could be a business because Daku has been shaking here. I think he's a little bit buzzed. Daku retreating to the ropes and you see those legs just don't look 
absolutely solid to me. Maybe he's managed to ride this one out because that was a rough passage for him. Absolutely right to the body. I think he just dropped the forearms on that one, Daku. Pitazo may be sensing that he's not quite ready to go yet. Hasn't unloaded everything, which is wise. Fighters will always get a sense when someone's in trouble when an opponent's really wilting and it looked like he was but in the final few seconds of round five lovely left hand there from Pitters just leading off with the hook well you have to tip your hat to Farouk Daku he has taken some serious punishment in this fight and he's managed to stay on his feet and here was that torrent of punches really from Pitters good accurate stuff he's looked for that right hand to the body that uppercut to the body quite a few times and he's had good success with it he was giving ground here Daku there was a left to the body at some point as well which I think just hurt him a little bit that punch there after that he had those those arms clamped in even more than usual but he's a tough tough man so into the sixth touch of gloves between the two pitters I think will have had the whiff of a stoppage in his nostrils in that previous round but I don't think it was really on so he didn't go looking for it too much as I said he didn't empty the tank and punch himself out but Daku again at the start of the sixth here is just covering up there's absolutely nothing coming back from him at all I think that fifth really put a dent in him good jab there from Pitters and this really isn't competitive at all now it hasn't been from the first bell to be perfectly honest but now more than ever he's just a punch bag in there Farouk Daku and I wouldn't mind seeing his corner show a bit of compassion here and maybe pull this fighter out of the fight because all that awaits him here a minute into the sixth round there's another eight minutes of fairly heavy artillery he wants to see the final bell of course he does but I would say that he's earned his money here tonight already if he really puts his punches together here Pitters he might be able to force the referee to step in and stop this even if Daku doesn't look that hurt just because there really isn't anything coming back just as I say that Daku launches a double jab but Pitters able just to take those feet back and stay out of range comfortably Just go, with Shaki the jab go, there. Daku. It is just prowling, looking for a way in. Good right hand. Daku just trying to keep that head on the move. Missed with the uppercut there, Pitters, and he was irritated with himself because Daku had let a left hand go himself and was slightly open into the final minute of round six he's thrown a little bit more back in the second half of the round than he did in the first Daku looking for that right again there Pitters put a lot into that goes with the left of the body every now and again he's putting maximum power on these Pitters getting good rotation good leverage into the shots almost found him with the uppercut there Pitters big bombing right hand and the referee just telling Pitters to punch with the knuckle part of the glove that's what that was about a 
again, he was accurate in that round pit, as he has been all the way through. I was advocating bodywork earlier in the contest, and he's gone for that whenever he's had the opportunity. Daku is durable, is the word we use in boxing to describe opponents like him, and he is most certainly that. So into the sevens, two to go in this fight, scheduled for eight, announced as cruiserweight, because both of these two came in above the light heavyweight limit, but Pitters is very much still a light heavyweight. He will be when he boxes for titles it, again, which yeah, 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 he'll be hoping yeah. to do soon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. hand there from Pitters uh, was, again, a pretty no, solid no, shot. Every now and again, you see Daku just take a little bit of a half stumble step as he did again there with the one two landed and the right hand got through there and he's in big trouble here Daku Pitters looking to try and pour the pressure on the legs almost went there but he's just trying to cover up here Daku big left hand there from Pitters he's backed up into the corner and he's unloading nothing's coming back the referee could jump in any time he could jump in any time Pitters looking for the uppercut and the gloves almost coming down Daku eventually just lifts and falls in that neutral corner the referee should be waving this one off he doesn't need to count this he should be waving this one off Daku's back on his feet he's in no fit position to continue here Christopher Dean allows this to continue Pitters just steps on him and Daku is a completely open target here the referee needs to stop this he needs to stop this midway through round seven Daku is too brave for his own good his corner needs to stop this somebody surely has got to come to their senses and either throw the towel here or step in because he's getting an absolute beating right hand there from Pitters again big left he's almost out on his feet here Daku the way he went down from that knockdown unbelievable that he managed to get up from it really again you see the legs almost go there straight right hand and the knees dip again just over a minute remaining in round seven and this is becoming painful to watch looking for the straight right hand again there Pitters now just taking a little bit of a step off looking to get back on the jab and Daku has somehow managed to get through that I don't know how he's managed to do it for my money he shouldn't have been allowed to right hand there knocks him back into the ropes why the corner is not stopping this I couldn't tell you leading off with the left hand there again Pitters this hasn't been competitive for a good stretch now big right hand there again from Pitters and Daku somehow manages to stay up this time he goes down the referee signals no knockdown a punch did start that I thought but then there was a coming together and he ended up going down into the final few seconds of the round and this has been a brutal brutal round for Farouk Daku long right hand again there from Pitters crunches through the guard and there comes the bell and he doesn't know where he is Farouk Daku he's got no idea where he is or what is happening he headed for the wrong corner now he's going back to the blue corner that trainer needs to stop this fight he needs to stop this fight right now he should have stopped it a minute into the previous round there's that right hand you see the knees just dip there and then Pitters gets to work he is a phenomenally tough man Farouk Daku he really is down he goes you look at the way he goes down there for my money the referee should have stopped the fight at this point look at his body shape there as he goes down he's absolutely done Second date for the eighth and final round. So into eighth and final round. Touch of gloves between these two. Can Shaq and Pitters get the stoppage in this final three minutes? Good right hand again there. And Baku just buffeted back into the ropes. Big right. And the referee has a quick word about punching with the inside of the glove. Good left hook there again from Pitters. 
absolutely extraordinary that Daku has managed to soak all this up, but he just shouldn't have had to. You've got to show some compassion in professional boxing. Hard business though it is. His corner have shown him none. And the referee hasn't shown him any either. Right hand into the body there. Pitt is setting his feet. Let's go with the combination. Just there, let him flow. Crunchy 1-2 again there from Pitters. This is a good workout for Shakan Pitters. He's kept the punch out but high. He's worked at a really good tempo throughout the fight. Has lifted in the second half of the fight. He's been accurate. Left to the body. Climbs into another big left hand there, Pitters, and I think he could be ready to go again here, Farouk Daku, midway through the round. Pitters just looking to tee off. Jab comes back there from Daku. The long right hand from Pitters. Nice combination again there from Pitters and Daku is taking these. I make this a good performance from Pitters. He was never in danger of losing this fight. It was a question whether he could get the stoppage, but as I say, he's, he's ramped it up bit by bit as we've gone through the rounds here. He's never got lazy. He's never got too greedy either. He's not looked to be flashy or extravagant. He's kept it simple. He's been nice and accurate and spiteful. And I think he'll probably wonder how he hasn't managed to get the stoppage win here. Good solid jab there from Pitters. And Daku is going to make it through to the bell here, which is pretty amazing, really. Some might see that as justification for allowing the fight to continue. I don't myself. Well, there goes the final bell. Touch of gloves between the two there. And Farouk Daku has earned every penny of his purse. And he gets a good ovation from the crowd inside the... Sky Dome in Coventry bound to the four corners of the ring and that's really good to see because that is some shift that is some effort and they know it in the Pitters corner shake of the head there from Shakab Pitters he cannot believe that Daku has managed to stand up to that he cannot believe it but that was a good eight rounds there for Pitters they want to get him back into title contention soon maybe one more I think might be the plan which city are we in now? The doctor asking Daku there which city he's in. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not too sure. I think that fight should have been stopped. But it was allowed to continue. And we went the distance. And that's two wins now since his defeat to Craig Richards that saw him lose his British title, Shaq and Pitters. It's always a rebuilding process when you suffer a first professional defeat and he was stopped on that occasion too but he looked nice and sharp tonight obviously been working ferociously hard in the gym he's in unbelievable shape you have to be if you're going to make 175 pounds at six foot six inches tall after eight rounds of cruiserweight boxing, we ask our scoring referee to decide this bout. Christopher Dean has it at 80 points to 70 points in favour of the winner from Birmingham, England, Shekhan Putters. And boxing fans as well, a round of applause, please, for our very gallant runner-up there, Farouk Daku.